The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Wine Vault Radio with Jason Bryant from WineVaultTV.com. Wine tasting's in the Kiwi studio from the guy who uh, reviews wine online. Um, he's got a whole bunch of videos you can go and check out anytime you want on demand. It's all up at WineVaultTV.com. Jason Bryant is the guy. G'day there, Jason. Good morning, Wemo. How are you? Nice to see you. You're just uh, on I'm your own, on your Jack Jones this morning. On, on my own. Uh, very lonely around here. That's probably with why carrot. I've taken to playing the carrot. Yeah, and kind of... Uh, Musical interludes, random musical interludes. Yeah, I've experienced this morning with 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 no experience of playing the flute. Oh, uh, I, think I would that, say I think recorder. Record. Yeah, this cat's kind of sounding recorder. Yeah, especially yeah. when you go. Exactly. Oh, oh, I think that takes me back to yeah. my, my Maori youth. <laughs> any um, <laughs> any call to the pa. <laughs> exactly. And any any family um, that's ever been af- afflicted with the recorder Yes, exactly. I mean, it's the home. parents' worst nightmare, oh. I think. Um, that or the violin. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you just really want them to, to practice at school. You can imagine parents just when the kids come home, say, right, I'm taking up the... And they're like, oh, what's it going to be? <laughs> just that, that held breath. <laughs> I'm taking up the... You don't even mind drums. Because at least you can get know. on there and you can kind of vent all your frustration of the day and just whack the drums and stuff like that well regardless th- of um musical ability there'd be one way of looking at it i guess yeah uh, as well as the recorder you just gotta okay. suffer oh no uh, not the recorder the ukulele would be all right yeah ukulele is not too bad uh, but um you'd send your send your kid back with a sick note or something dear dear miss Anne or whatever Please excuse my, my child today from the recording lesson. She's feeling a bit sick. <laughs> Just so that you don't have to suffer. <laughs> That's what I would do anyway. Yeah. Due to lack of interest from the parents. Yes. Um, my daughter will not be attending recorded lessons today. No, but you attended. Just making a segue. Yeah, um, nice the, segue. <laughs> Just um, about attending things. The um, In New Zealand Wine, was it the Wine Awards? Wine Award Gold Medal Winners Tasting. Oh, right. Okay. So and the awards the de- has happened. The awards has happened. So they've... Now just released all the gold and pure gold medal winners. Yeah. And pure gold is for um, those that are sustainable. So there's a real uh, difference between gold and pure gold. So you've got the sustainables. Mm. And pure gold seems it seems much more elite. When you get a pure gold over gold. Why don't they just make the, the gold silver and the pure gold gold? No, because you have they really wanted to um, differentiate uh, those that are sustainable and those who aren't. Okay. Your wine may still be good, or well, fantastic, even though you're not sustainable. So you get a gold for that, and you do get silvers and bronzes as well throughout the wines. Yeah, um, but pure gold is for those that are sustainable because it's pure. Oh, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it, it does sense. seem. Yeah. There's a big difference between the the term pure gold and gold because it says like what twenty four carat. Yeah. Um, the best, the best of the best yeah. is what it. Yeah. Rather than. Says. Kind of noting that it's uh, for sustainable purposes mm. rather than anything else. It makes wine sound more elite, which hopefully will be an incentive for others. Mm. So, yeah, so I'm kind of for it and, yeah, for and against some of it. Yeah. Um, but I went to that and a little surprised about some of the wines that picked up golds and pure golds. But, I mean, it's, it's really kind of my just my perspective yeah, and my palate that kind of um, tells me... I probably wouldn't have given that a gold. So but this was that, that full scenario where there's like spit buckets everywhere. Yeah, and it's all the media, all the kind of uh, the Herald and stuff like that, um, their Radio New Zealand, TVNZ. Yeah. Um, and they're all there and they're all having a big tasting. Um, and the, me- the media are just guzzling it back. No, no. The actual yeah. tasters are going, you know, spitting. And uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> the media is just... Uh, but uh, uh, Michael track. Cooper, who I've got a lot of respect for, he yeah. came up and said thanks very much to me. So that was quite a... Oh, cool. Yeah, because I made a video about Matt Skinner, the Aussie guy who had written this book about... Uh, it's a wine review book. Yeah. And so this this led us into an interesting conversation. Um, it was a wine review book that he released, and the deadline was January, and some of the wines he tasted mm. were 2010s that were still on the vine. Oh. How's that possible? Well, because he did a preview rather than a review. Oh, yeah. And so um, because it was commercial pressure yeah. from his book company that wanted to um, to release the book with these wines included. And so it, it really said, uh, Mike and I joked, kind of, when shall he do his preview book for 2012 wines mm. now? Mm. 
or release his 2011 best wine. How could you miser. preview? You could say, oh, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's currently some grapes on the on the vine at the yeah, moment. Yeah, but he had actually written these notes as if he had actually tasted the wines. And so it was found out. Michael Cooper busted him. That's a shocker. Um, even though they're the same book company and he got a kind of uh, preview of the book. And so he busted him and made this announcement. Decanter in the, um, in the UK released an article and made it kind of like their story of the day or story of the week. And um, so I've got a lot of... Um, I think he's got a lot of credibility within the industry because he is, he's got a lot of integrity, he's, he's quite transparent. He blew open the whole Wither Hills case that ended up with him being removed from writing for Cuisine magazine. Yeah. And so, um, for, for me, you want people like that in the industry. I mean, he, he is the, the pillar of the wine critics community, I think. So it was good. And He's the wine ball buster. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so one of the wines that we tasted and I was very surprised at is, is the Greystone, and this is the Feather Star Riesling 2010, very young, mm. um, but this picked up a gold. And, um, and Where's this see- little sticker? Oh, because I haven't put the stickers on yet. But they will, do you think? But it is the New Zealand Wine Awards, and uh, it's probably the most prestigious kind of wine show um, in New Zealand, I mm. mean, we do have the Royal Easter Show, and we have the New World Wine Awards, and Liquorland Top One Hundred, and stuff like that. Yeah, but Air New Zealand is the pinnacle of wine shows in New Zealand for me. Uh, their sticker is it's like a, a seal of approval, mm. and so people will buy on that. That and Cuisine Magazine. Does it translate to Air New Zealand carrying the wines on on the airline? Uh, some of it does, yeah, mm. yeah. And so, um, and it's a really nice kind of synergy because they're obviously serving up and trying to give that whole New Zealand experience. And here's Air New Zealand Wine Awards, which is just dealing with New Zealand wine. Mm, makes sense. Uh, yeah, and there's, it's really nice, and it's kind of nicely interlaced. And they're a really good sponsor for New Zealand wine. Mm. And um, so, but Riesling, I mean, it's the wine lover's wine. But very few out of the wine critics and what makers and uh, retailers actually are drawn immediately to Riesling. It's yeah. a very, very small percentage that well, actually it's like it. fallen off the marketing boil as of late, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody kind of harks back to the 80s when they were sickly sweet and stuff like mm. that, and so kind of that, that's people's memories. And also then you've got their parents of, of children now that are old enough to drink are still, are still got those memories from their parents and so it's a familial trait rather than kind of like their own experience. Well, I remember when I first started buying wine, I would always gravitate to Riesling. Just, I guess it was an, um, an easy choice because uh, you, you know, you'd have the wine um, and the cheese. And yeah. Riesling was always the one that you knew would always go with the, with, with the cheese. I mean, it is, it's so versatile. Yeah. Because um, you can go from really bone dry to kind of very sweet. Mm. Um, kind of like the Noble Rieslings, which is... Um, uh, kind of like on the dessert wine um, scale of things. So, I mean, it's quite sweet, but then you have a whole range of sweetness and dryness throughout the, the Riesling um, spectrum. And so, kind of, and it goes with a lot of food as well. It can obviously go with dessert, kind of something very sweet, um, just, just kind of like really decent fish dishes and stuff like that. And it can go with kind of some other meats as well. So, I mean, it's very, very versatile. And all the wine lovers love it, and it's a kind of like the holy grail of the wine lover and stuff like that. Me, I'd rather Chardonnay or Pinot Noir. Okay. Um, and I can never understand why people, all the wine lovers tend to kind of Riesling. be really enthused about the, the wine. And I'm not sure whether it's because everybody expects them to. Is it because it's that, uh, it's that later harvest thing, you know, it's stayed on the vine a little bit longer, there's little characteristics going on apparently. You know, it, it can be complex, and mm. this is one of the things that I liked about this wine. I mean, it's, it's quite a clear wine. It's, it, it, it does. Mm. Yeah, but it's very young. Um, not a lot of colour to it. Not a lot of colour, but then you smell the nose. I kind of get this kind of grapefruit with a bit mm. of kind of stony character. Do you know if you get those river stones straight out of, out of yeah. the river and you smell them and and if, if you put them on your tongue they leave you that slaty mm. kind of taste. I'm constantly chewing on rocks yeah. when I go to the river. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but we've all put stones in our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think so, yeah. But I, I do know what you mean. I get it's this lemon that, zest and... It's that high mountain river bead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's the character that I get off this nose. We're going to get some grapefruit mm-hmm. and get some lemon and stuff like that. It's... Mm. 
Oh, lovely and sweet. It has got that wow. that sweetness to it. Mm. And it's quite rich. And even though you've got that real rich, intense fruit sweetness, it's quite light and still quite subtle in your mouth. Mm. And it finishes on a, quite a dry note. Mm. So, I mean, it's quite complex. It goes right from very sweet, kind of like primary fruit, that lemon, yeah. almost a bit of grapefruit. And then at the end, you get that stony effect. But it kind of settles down and mellows yeah. as well, like yeah. not like a, um, a, a sav, yeah. which will, might stay a little bit lively and sour for longer. Yeah. This kind of sits down and goes, eh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And so it's going to be a good food wine. It's only 2010, so, I mean, it's hmm. kind of probably picked in April and kind of released fairly recently. How long could a Riesling like this stay around for in the bottle? I mean, I, for me, this kind of wine would be kind of like two to three years. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's... Yeah, and then you get the, the noble Rieslings. Um, and you can can like, some dry Rieslings as well, which kind of will last 20 years. Mm. Golly, that's really yeah. nice. I really, really like that. It's nice and refreshing. Yeah. yeah kind of, this is a summer wine. Yeah. You sit back on your deck and you have a bit of food next to you, a bit of shellfish prawns or something like that, and you mm. have a bit of this as well. And kind of, for me, I, I think it's great. What would you give it? I, I'm quite glad that it got a gold. Um, and I do agree with that. I, I'm going to go kind of like 90 points. 90. And what price point? From memory, under twenty five bucks. Not not bad. Wow, that's a bargain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's pretty good, and it's quite nice mm. to go to see it stand out in the in the wine awards, mm. kind of on the Riesling table as well. There's Johannesov as well, which was the other one that I really liked. Um, and then, but the Pinot Noir section, out of the twelve pure golds, yeah, nine came from Central Otago. Mm. Not seventy five percent. Not surprising. Um, and yeah, there was there's some pretty good ones. There. Um, one of the ones that I really didn't like from the Royal Easter Show, which was the Mondello 2008. They had the 2009 um, Central Otago Mondello there that won a gold. Yeah. And I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. Best value was Pencaro Pinot Noir from uh, Martinborough. Yeah. Um, Palace was the second label. Yeah. Spot on. And just to review, what did we just taste? It was the Greystone. Greystone from Wipro, which is my kind of, I always say, is New Zealand's most exciting new wine region. Um, Featherstar Riesling 2010. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much, Jason. A pleasure. Check you out at uh, winebolttv.com. Also, Jason underscore Bryant on Twitter.